Hi there. If you're a DXer or a shortwave listener, broadcast band listener, whatever it is, uh, then this is the Bible. Um, in fact, I just mentioned on my kind of channel update video, I just did that, you know, the WRTH is the one body of information that can be relied upon 100%. Um, the stuff on the internet, the medium wave list, the shortwave.info websites, um, shortwave schedules, they're brilliant. Um, the Black Cat system schedule I have for the shortwave bands on my iPhone, brilliant. Um, but they're not 100% correct. Um, and as far as I'm aware, uh, I've never been let down by uh, an entry in the WRTH uh, on shortwave. Um, so, you know, for me, this book is the Bible. Long may it continue. Um, I'm lucky enough that I managed to persuade the boss to buy me a copy for Christmas every year. Here it is, 2018. Um, I'm just going to run through it just quickly. One piece of information, actually, or one uh, observation this year. Um, oh, there you go. There's a 40th anniversary um, advertisement for AOR. Um, is that the... BBC World Service still uh, advertise uh, the inside, complete inside page, first page, second page, whatever it is, um, which is really good. Uh, the, the fact that you know the BBC supports this publication, I don't know how much they pay for that advert, but the fact that they're in here is brilliant. Um, and then there's an ad. I think I remember the same advert from 2017 actually from Nortel. Um, there's an image of the system. DRM systems that they're putting in in India. So there you go. DRM lives for a while at least. Um, advert for Win Radio again, the whole page advert for the Excalibur Sigma. Um, I never had the pleasure of using a Win Radio SDR, but I only really read good things about them. Uh, editorial, um, which I won't go through. Um, but it, they do note that they were impressed with the ICOM IC8600 receiver. Um, uh, and then there's the usual section on contributors to the 2018 issue. And I was looking down this list and there was a couple of people I actually recognise and actually know. Um, Dan Goldfarb, who is a friend of mine. Uh, Rudolf Grimm. Uh, they're probably the only two that I actually know that I can call as radio colleagues or friends um, there's probably others on there as well but I'm not going to go through all of them but uh, quite nice that uh, the WRTH uh, makes a point of listing everyone that helps uh, local information is so important with particularly with uh, regional stations you know on the tropical band um, as I mentioned in my other video you know in Brazil I'm hearing stuff that you just don't hear in Europe um, and you know it provides it's good information um, for other DXs on other continents you know yes this station does broadcast but only infrequently or yes this station does broadcast all the time but you know um, they just don't have the TX power um, so it's good <coughs> okay so we have uh, a review of the R8600, £2,499, wow, that's a lot of money for a receiver, um, but I, I would say that um, if I asked for that for Christmas it would have to be for the next 10 Christmases all in, but a very lengthy review and an overall rating of 4 stars, very good. Um, bit annoying that you spend two and a half thousand pounds on a receiver and it, it isn't actually excellent it's only very good um, but there you go um, and then there's a review on the SDR play RSP2 <coughs> um, a lot cheaper 155 pounds a bit more like it uh, AOR AR DV10 review obviously not available yet um, Texan PL 880 which we're all pretty familiar with, and the S8800. All right, so there you go. Um, two receivers of the moment, although the PL880 has been out a few years. 
Um, when the S8800 first came out, or I think, I don't know whether it was pre-production or whether it was the sort of first production run, the first batch, suffered terribly with birdies. Um, but apparently they've fixed all that. Um, the one unit I tested didn't suffer with that at all. Cross-country wireless active loop. Um, seen a bit more about them online recently. Um, and then the Calibri Nano, direct sample in SDR. £240. Um, don't know much about it, but there you go. Read the review. Um, the receiver guide, as usual. Um, advertisement from Universal Radio. And then a feature on an Antipodean journey. Uh, I'm sh assuming, yeah, New Zealand, etc. Some kind of journey and tuning to the radio uh, and then another advertisement I can't even pronounce that Alex and Yei uh, radio broadcast equipment obviously transmitters okay well that's good um, and then an article called receiving noise um, so wideband RF Photovoltaic cells, apparently. Uh, oh, okay. So they're talking about mitigation of noise, I think. Uh, yeah. So some years ago, we discussed the issue uh, of noise interference for radio reception in the context of a description and assessment of loop antennas at, the, at that time the position was bad enough and regrettably it's even worse today although emphasis has changed somewhat on that basis and as a result of reader feedback we thought it was worth revising the subject and outlining some of the issues in greater detail so there you go a whole article on noise i don't need to read an article on noise um, i'm very au fait with it already at my qth um oh okay there's another advert for aor which i think is identical to the advert on the inside front cover okay uh, an article on rri Um, and then an article on a new medium wave station that they're setting up in Israel, Voice of Hope, um, who are already all over shortwave doing their thing. Um, an advert for radio user and practical wireless. So my review of the Texan SH800 is going to be in Radio User Magazine, the February edition. If you've got the December edition, I am actually already in there um, because I've started uh, sending them my DX logs. Um, so, uh, and I think the first of the first of those appeared um, in the December edition. So, you know, in support of the radio magazine that supports our hobby, I thought, why not? It only takes about an hour to, to chuck it all into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay, and then another article: Radio Voices from the South Seas. A former advisor to the Solomon Islands Broadcasting Corporation, Dr. Martin Hadlow, explores some history. Okay, South Sea Broadcasting. So that, I think that will be an interesting read. Um, and then some more advertisements: Waters and Stanton, uh, International Radio Club, the Premier Club for Broadcast Band DXers. Um, okay, there's a. Radio Vision ADXB. I'm assuming that's a club, but I could be wrong. Uh, an update on digital broadcasting. Very nice. Uh, advert for the Spectrum Monitor and an advert for CQ Amateur Radio. So I think one of these were here in the, in the book last year. Uh, HF broadcasting conditions, a kind of forecast for conditions through 2018 and then the matrix of the most suitable frequencies for 2018 as usual pretty handy that although I, I, I say that every year but I never look at it um, the usual explanation on how to use WRTH this is one page now in older in older editions that used to spread across sort of three or four pages <laughs> okay radio world map and advert this is basically with the globe and you can kind of zoom in home in and click on locations and listen to the radio stations kind of basically with direct access from a map of, from a, a globe or map of the world um and this is interesting new editions of the annual guides to uk broadcasting so the uk listeners guide and the tv viewers guide interesting okay wrth the big the bar graph frequency guide uh, available from december 2017 and then an 
and as per as per last year for the excellent SWL post, don't miss my latest article on hardcore tropical bandy axing from Brazil. Um, a couple more clubs, and then the usual maps of the world. Um, and then onto the okay world timetable, and then a couple more adverts, and then onto the usual features national radio, international frequency lists, national television and reference. So I'm not going to go through all of that because we're all pretty familiar with that. So what is interesting is that the total number of pages in this book, 672, is exactly the same as last year, 672. Um, but the first thing I did was check shortwave stations of the world. And in 2018, there are 20, I think 21 sides of lot listings for shortwave stations of the world. In 2017, there were 23. So effectively, we've lost two sides, one page of shortwave stations of the world. So it's dropped from 23 to 21. So basically, about that's about 10%. Uh, and so, although it's probably not a particularly accurate measure, but if you write down all the stations in the world, where they operate, the frequencies they operate, you know, it's 10% down on last year. And that sort of makes sense. But what's interesting, if you then go to um, international broadcasts, so this is in English, French, German, Portuguese, and Spanish, uh, you, there's the, basically the same number of entries in terms of pages. There's 11 sides, 11 pages, uh, 2017, 2018. So although shortwave broadcasting in general has dropped with Australia leaving, etc., etc., International broadcasting has remained pretty constant, um, so that I thought that was interesting. Um, so regionally, uh, it seems to be maybe have dropped a little bit, um, and then obviously you know I know Australia was an international broadcaster, but in terms of international broadcasts, it's it's static. So uh, that's interesting. Um, so there you go. And in terms of the number of advertisers, I think. There's one less advertiser this year than, than last year. So, so there you go. So that is the WRTH 2018. And this section here is where you go to when you're listening to something on shortwave and you've got no idea what you're listening to, which doesn't happen very often these days, or, or it's ambiguous. There could be more than one target station. Uh, and it's these few pages, these 21 pages that are kind of like the Bible. These are the pages that had all of the research, all of those co contributors from the front of the book helping to um, put all this information together. And that's why it's so accurate. Um, so there you go. WRTH 2018, 2017, 2016 in the cupboard behind me. So, you know, I recommend this book because um, if you're serious about wanting to know who you're listening to, there isn't anything better available uh, online or there's nothing available in terms of a hard copy. Uh, this is really where it's at. So, um, you know, do yourself a favour and, and get yourself a copy. Um, I think that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>